May we all put our hands together to honor and to appreciate on behalf of the state. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to the Naglan CSR Investment Conclave 2022, the inaugural program here on the 22nd and 23rd of August 2022 here at NBCC Convention Center, Kohima, Naglan. To begin with for the inaugural session, may I welcome for the welcome remarks for the opportunities for business and social investments by Sri Alam Temshi Jamir, CEO, Investment and Development Authority of India to do the honors. stay more comfortable. But I will leave that to the corporates who are here today and welcome any investor who would be willing to set it up. Today is indeed a red letter day for the people of Nagaland. According to our records, the Honorable Finance Minister happens to be the first ever Union Finance Minister holding the post to visit Nagaland. It is also a historical in the sense that Madam is bringing the winds of change, ushering new thinking and new direction to the people of the state to focus on the corporate and private sector as an engine of growth and development. We're indeed grateful to the Honorable FM who has accepted the invitation ext extended by our Honorable Chief Minister and has further changed it from a simple CSR conclave to include banking, and credit outreach and the ever important aspect of investment. Nagaland has a lot of promising potentials and strength. Our rich natural resources that include our biodiversity and mineral wealth. We have our locational advantage of foreign borders for which our honorable prime minister has announced the ACTIS policy. We also comprise a tribal people who are dynamic and resilient, who are simple and honest in outlook and who have survived the centuries through the diligence, hard work and grit. As tribal people, we are now trying to grapple to survive in the 21st century with its AI, VR, internet of things, cloud computing, and the world fast moving towards the unknown borders of technological singularity. We do have our weaknesses and shortcomings. We are still underdeveloped and remain remote and fragile. We also have our seven decade old insurgency that has been accompanied by violence. And not only that not only causes much grief and confusion, but also seriously affects our economic growth, including preventing the much needed investment from coming into our land. Our political problem stems from a fierce love of freedom of the tribal, which is not necessarily the freedom and independence as understood in the 17th century Western European concept of sovereignty and nationalism. But this love of freedom of the tribal has somehow been morphed into a violent movement and has been with the state for the last 70 years. A violence that is further aggravated by the confusion of the future and the inestimable changes brought about by modern civilization. 
It is causing disparity among the people that never existed in the past, particularly in our tribal way of life. This complex phenomena needs healing and can perhaps be overcome by inducing a faster pace of development and growth, including the technological changes that is already available in India and elsewhere in the world. It is here that the corporates and the private sector that has been absent from Magaland all these years can play a leading role. It is our sincere hope that a CSR enclave will be a crucial link to bring about the corporate world and the people of Magaland in understanding another dimension of development that can be translated in the words of Amartya Sen, another dimension of freedom. It is this aspect that we have been looking forward to when we have requested the Honorable Finance Minister for this conference to open up the eyes, particularly of the Naga people, that there is a private and corporate world that will lead to development and be an engine of growth apart from the government and government alone. Banking and credit comprise another crucial area of development. Our people, especially in the rural areas, have no idea of the banking culture, leave aside the issue of the capital market. And most think that the state government is a temporary institution pending a final political settlement and that the banks are an extension of the government. This affects the issue of loan and recovery. The banking and credit outreach therefore planned out here today will greatly add to the evolution of a banking culture among the people that will further enhance development processes of the state. With so much at stake and so much content that the Honorable Union Minister has brought through her visit to the state, we can only thank you, ma'am, and assure you of our determination to carry forward the visions and goals set by you. We thank the members of the Indian industry who are here today and have been adventurous to come, some for the second time, in spite of our conditions. I salute your true spirit of entrepreneurship and adventure, and I pray that this will lead to something substantial for the people of Nagaland. Finally, I thank the Honorable Chief Minister and the Chief Secretary who have involved the entire state machinery to work for the success of this conclave. And I also thank the indomitable track team and the members of the IDAN who have proved that the government can efficiently and effectively rise to any occasion. May God bless us all. Thank you very much. For the business, economy, and social environment, a state overview, may I call upon Sri J. Alu, the Chief Secretary, Government of Nagra. Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Srimati Nirmala Sitaramanji, the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Shri Nipyo Ryoji, Honorable Ministers, Advisors, Honorable MLAs, Senior Officers from the Government of India, Secretary, Department of Financial Services, MDs, CEOs, and other senior managers representing the corporate and the banking sector, senior officers from the state, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great honor to extend a very warm welcome to you all in to this inaugural session of the Nagaland CSR Banking and Investment Conclave and to provide you with a general overview of the business economy and social environment of Nagaland. As you know, Nagaland is the 16th state of the Indian Union and the second senior most state of the Northeast region, sharing its borders with Myanmar, Arunachal, Assam and Manipur. The state with an area of 16,579 kilometers has 16 administrative districts and is home to diverse indigenous tribes. About one-fifth of the state's area is in the foothills, 
which is one of the mineral belts as well as the grain bowl of the state. The Naga tribal communities are traditionally centered around independent villages with a rich social capital and strong community spirit. We have harnessed these strengths by institutionalizing a unique system of village development boards and communitization of public services. Direct involvement of the community in planning and implementation of development programs has brought better development outcomes and is a good example of grassroots planning and community participation. It's a place where traditions and customs harmoniously coexist with the changing times. Nagaland is a land of healthy community environment with a strong sense of hospitality and love for all. The economy of Nagaland at present revolves around agriculture and services in which government services have the largest share. In the state DGP in 2021-22, services contributed 61% and agriculture 27%. The contribution of manufacturing activities in which construction is actually has a major share is only 12% at present. The per capita income in Nagaland, as you would know, is about $2,000 at a GSDP of 32,424 crore. We are in the fourth position in terms of literacy in the Northeast region, and our literacy rate is slightly above the national average. We have a large young workforce and around 6,000 6, to 7,000 students graduate every year. English being the official language and the medium of instruction in schools and colleges, the young population in Nagaland is equipped in soft skills, having special talent in creative arts like music and singing and with potential for high labor productivity. This greatly enhances the position of the state as an attractive location for development and growth of businesses, industry and related services. Nagaland is richly endowed with fertile land community managed forests, abundant mineral wealth, and skilled human resources. 70% of the state's population is engaged in agriculture. Since the inception of the state, agriculture has made significant progress in terms of production and productivity of food grains from 61,000 metric ton in 63-64 to 7.5 lakh metric ton in 2021. There is significant potential in the state for agro and horticultural produce, including exotic fruits. Three of our agro products, that is Naga tree tomato, Naga cucumber, and Naga king chili are GI tagged. Further expansion is possible by increasing per hectare yield and by bringing more area under cultivation, as well as by, bringing, by increasing the area under settled cultivation. All this requires availability of agri inputs and market linkages. Nagaland is also richly endowed with natural mineral resources like oil and natural gas, limestone, coal, cobalt, and magnetite. Nagaland has more than a thousand million tons of high grade chemical, high chemical grade limestone in the eastern region and approximately 600 million tons of crude oil besides other minerals. Most of these resources remain unexploited due to lack of investment in mining and related infrastructure. The state government has over the years encouraged development of traditional handicrafts and organic agricultural and horticultural products. As part of providing access to markets, we have developed various indigenous brands from Nagaland, such as Nagaland Coffee, Naturally Nagaland, Monken, and Mikey, etc. Brands like these from Nagaland are unique given their connection to the grassroots 
and targeted at taking our indigenous products beyond the state borders while also generating live, livelihood opportunities. They could achieve scale with the right partnership and collaboration with experienced companies and entrepreneurs. Nagaland also has a good potential to develop as a major tourist hub. The Hornbill Festival of Nagaland celebrates the rich Naga culture with tourists from India and abroad, becoming a confluence of our composite culture and exemplifying the national pride of unity in diversity. The Festival of Festivals has, over the years, become a recognizable brand of the state and attracts domestic and foreign tourists. With the help of the Government of India, the infrastructure of the state is getting rapidly transformed. Work is on to connect Kohima with the National Railway Network. The road network in the state is also being modernized and expanded across the state. The airport at Dimapur is also being expanded. Besides efforts to have an airport at Kohima and heliports in several other locations. We are also exploring the feasibility of developing waterways through our major rivers. The state government has passed the Nagaland Startup Policy 2019 in order to encourage entrepreneurship and with the aim to establish Nagaland as a model startup leader in the Northeast region. So far, 59 startups have been registered. The state has four incubators for startups. Nagaland Tool Room and Training Center, Dimapur, YouthNet, National Institute of Electronics and Inf Information Technology, and Edu Center. In tune with the changing global technology and business environment, the state is increasingly making use of information technology in modernizing and automatic, automa automating government functioning as well as in the delivery of public services. We also aim at generating skilled human resource so as to promote an IT-led economy and generate employment opportunities for our youth. As the Honorable Prime Minister has emphasized the importance of transforming governance and regulatory systems, the state government has prioritized these reforms aimed at providing basic amenities and ease of living for every citizen. Further, the state government is also committed to creating a conducive business environment and we are working on adopting the reforms points in the business reforms action plan. The state's commitment to augment ease of doing business in Nagaland has gone a step further with the launch of the single window system to facilitate
agents of change uh, so that we can collectively uh, work towards not only achieving our goals and dreams together, but also achieving the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, who has been focusing on developing India and strengthening India vis-a-vis -vis the Northeast. Camps initiated by Microsoft. Breaking gender stereotypes and enabling more than 12,000 girls in government schools to access digital fluency in 21st century skills across 16 districts of Nagaland, IBM introduced the Pen for Girls in partnership with the Department of School Education and Quest Alliance, with Yearnet as its implementation partner to encourage girls to explore career possibilities in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yudnet also introduced a certified professional painting training in partnership with Asian Paints Color Academy. This program has trained over 100 unemployed youths who are now operating at various construction sites in the state. Another successful CSR program implemented was Cottage Golden Green Beauty Promo. Paru, 
A beautician from a humble beginning has now expanded into imparting training to fellow girls in the state. This program incubates women entrepreneurs in the beauty and wellness sector, enabling them to be self-employed and addressing the issue of migration. This empowered women to transverse a journey of discovering dignity through work. All this had been made possible by our supporters. We are thankful to have various funders for empowering young people and making lives better and more meaningful. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. For the industry perspective, may I call upon Sri R. Dinesh, the President Designate, Confederation of Indian Industry, CII. Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs. Nipu Ryu, Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Senior Ministers in the Dais, Senior Secretaries of the Central Government and the State Government, Dignitaries on the Dais, Friends from the Industry, the CR, CSR Fraternity, and Media. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you all. It gives me a great pleasure to be part of this conclave, and I would like to congratulate the Government of Nagaland for their efforts in organizing the CSR an investment conclave 2022. CII is very happy to partner with the government in this unique initiative. On behalf of CII, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman. Her astute management of the economy during these difficult times has enabled India to emerge as one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And we thank her for her continuing vision and leadership. Thank you, madam. We also appreciate the huge efforts being made under your guidance for the ease of doing business through the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and we look forward to more such activities in the future. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to the Honorable Chief Minister, and thank you, sir, for hosting the corporates on this occasion, and we look forward to partnering with you as well. It's great to see so many CEOs and people from the CSR fraternity joining us today and this shows what the earlier speakers mentioned about the interest with regard to the Northeast and the development of this area being one of the core focus for the industry as well. It has already been mentioned that the Northeast region and especially Nagaland has a resource rich, talent rich pool, which I think also should be the focus for us to be able to enable the development of this region. The initiatives such as developing the Sipway port in Myanmar access to Chittagong port in Bangladesh, improving the road, rail, and other infrastructure, and development of inland waterways will further strengthen the connectivity of this region with neighboring countries and the rest of India. In this environment, enhancing the investment opportunities, and therefore the CSR in the Northeastern region, will be a strong focus for Indian industry, and we will continue to support this. It has already been mentioned that the amount of CSR being spent in this region is quite low, but I would like to stress that investments in CSR go hand in hand, and therefore having this as a combined venture or a conclave is something which I think is very important for us to make sure that we work together. We do understand that education and healthcare has been the priority in the earlier years, but I would say that the focus has now got to shift to local development and skill building in multiple sectors. And it is necessary to cover which can be done in locally in Nagaland and Northeast, and also prepare the ground for further manufacturing investments to take place in this area. Already the Chief Secretary mentioned that the state is working on the logistics policy and developing a logistics skill development roadmap and improving storage facility and connectivity in Nagaland will not only help the local agriculture sector, as well as the industries which are based out of local manufacturing here, but also pave the way for future manufacturing investments to be taking place here. We are well aware of the various initiatives which have been part of the Gati Shakti projects to improve the connectivity to the Northeast. And as we progress forward with this, I have a specific solution which I will cover in a couple of minutes. But I think one of the key requirements will be to the ability to link supply chains digitally. 
And that's something where the resource rich Northeastern region, we can work together to make that skill available to enhance this for further trade and improvement here. Already, sir, you mentioned that the services sector is 61%, and I'm 100% sure that the logistics sector can help the growth of the manufacturing sector significantly going forward. And of course, this can also be applied even overseas considering the strategic location of uh, this region. CIA is proud to partner with the Nagaland government in this initiative and through the CIA foundation, we will work on inclusive development and in undertake high impact collaborative projects. You may be aware that CIA started or became part of this developmental journey in the Northeast by in 2001 itself, when we opened our first office in Kohima and we now have four operational offices in Northeast. In fact, today with the CIA members, we have agreed that we will be soon opening a zonal office in Dimapur as well and further strengthening our presence in Nagaland. Let me go to three specific initiatives which I wanted to highlight. One, we want to make sure that in CII we walk the talk and therefore I would like to propose that we will set up a logistics and supply chain training school in partnership with the CII Institute of Logistics and the Logistics Sector Skill Council. And we would come to the government to give us the necessary land, which will be about 5,000 square feet to enable us set this up. Further, from, on behalf of TVA Supply Chain, I'm happy to say that we will fund the first 300 students and enable them be employed, if not in Nagaland, elsewhere in the country, so that we can further improve the employability of this. We will start in a small way with 1,000 students in the first batch, but we will be able to ramp it up as we go along once we see this. Just to give some background, and I think the Honorable Finance Minister is somebody who's been very passionate about this, the current employment in the logistics sector is 22 million. Gati Shakti alone would add 10 million jobs. Over and above Gati Shakti, we are speaking about 6 million jobs being added in the logistics sector. And therefore, we will be actually scratching the surface with a small number of people we will be training. And I see a huge and unique opportunity for the Northeast to be a bed or the training ground for the future, which, as I said, will have a rub-off effect on this sector as well. Secondly, we are happy to support the government of Nagaland in promoting investments in the state by organizing roadshows both in India and overseas, especially in countries like Japan and Korea, which have had traditional links with the Northeast. From our side, I think you have the diaspora of, I would call it the Northeast people employed in other states within India. I think we should be able to leverage both using CIA as the bridge. Third, we have uh, set up model carrier centers in some states, and we would be very happy to partner with this Nagaland government in to set up a model carrier center as well here, which will help in planning and enabling better employability of the people of this region. Finally, I know that you have identified, proactively identified areas that need CSR support. Towards this, a shelf of, a shelf of potential CSR proposals have been shared with all of us. This curation is something we will catalyze and facilitate so that we can get to tangible improvements, which we can make real ground at the, at the ground level and be actions which can be directly implemented. We want our support to be directly linked with outcomes benefiting Nagaland and the Northeastern states. We believe sustainable skill development will lead to employment generation. And that's why we are starting with that. We want to make sure that the infrastructure development, which is already being prepared for, and if I remember right, Madam, it is about 134,000, lakh and 34,000 crores, which is going to be spent in Gati Shakti in the Northeastern states. And with that kind of investment taking place here, we believe that investment and CSR going hand in hand together, along with this kind of infrastructure development, will pave the way for a successful growth of this Northeastern states, especially in Agarne. Through CII and as TV supply chain, I'm personally committed towards the development of this state. And I would urge all my industry friends present here to collectively consider the opportunities and invest both financially and through CSR in Nagaland to deliver long-term value for the communities at large and create a more equitable and inclusive India in which the Northeastern states also flourish. I wish the conclave a huge success and once again, thanks for giving CIA an opportunity to be part of this event. Thank you.
For the Northeast Regional Perspective, may I call upon Sri Moses Chalai, the Secretary, NEC. Honorable Chief Minister Nagaland, Sri Difyo Ryoji, Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Srimati Nirmala Sitaram Manji, uh, <clears throat> Honorable Ministers of Nagaland, Honorable MLS, Chief Secretary and his team, uh, distinguished dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, and also the participants of today's um, conclave. I I'm very happy to be here in the midst of this very important conclave, which the uh, state government and the uh, finance ministry has organized this. I would like to give a very brief perspective about the, uh, from the Northeast region perspective about the investment and CSR scenario. Uh, we all know that much has happened, Madam, uh, in the last, Recent past, in fact, the infrastructure development in all respect has seen a dramatic change. And we all are witness to this visible change that is happening on the ground. Be it roads, aviation, telecom, rail, education, bridges, and various social uh, you know, other that, uh, sector activities or initiatives that are happening. Uh, <clears throat> now, we know that, uh, the, and also the 10% GBS, gross budget support that uh, uh, the non-exempted uh, ministries of about 55 of them, you know, it has gone up so dramatic that this year, 2022-23, all these ministries will be investing about 76,000 crores. That is not a small amount, that is about $10 billion. Uh, so much is happening, but much also needs to be done. And one of the, you know, one aspect that has become very glaring is the need for private investments to come in into the Northeast in a big way. Because on one hand, much is happening, but it's not been complemented and it's, you uh, know, by the economic transformation and generation of uh, imp, you know, jobs that need to happen. Um, <clears throat> so for instance, um, the, now we, I tried to get the figures, but uh, sorry, ma'am and sir, I could not get the exact figure, but like under MSME in Assam in the last, uh, between 2016 and 20, five years, it received only about 8,600 crores. Not much in five years. And it is said that the rest of the seven states of Northeast are about the same. Half of, I mean, are equal to about a sum state. Seven versus one, not much. If DI, the flow in three years, up to March 2022 is about only about $26 million, which is nothing much to write home about. Of which Assam received 18 million US dollars. Total FDI in 2021-22 for the country was around 83. $50 billion, that's about 6.2 lakh crores. So uh, it just goes to show that how less investment is happening uh, in, the, in the region. <clears throat> then coming to the CSR front, in 2020, 21, the Total CSR for the country was about 25,000 crores, of which only about 225 came to the Northeast. 
225. Actually, that comes to less than 1% of the whole CSR uh, that, you know, the envelope or the kitty. And out of that 225, Assam received about 72%. And out of the notice share, Mizoram received about less than half percent. And there are some states which did not receive anything also that year. Now, therefore, uh, then so much needs to be done. And of course, uh, uh, we surely cannot uh, follow the 10% GBS system and uh, you know, uh, under CSR, but if we take 10%, then it would have been, should have been around 2,500 CR. But we, it does not work like that. Ma'am and sir, I would like to say that uh, of late, uh, in the last few years, there has been a growing urgency of the need for investment, private investment to bring economic transformation and generation of jobs and creation of jobs. This was highlighted very specifically by Honorable PM in his address in NEC plenary meeting in 2016, where he very strongly emphasized on the need of you know, investment and economic transformation and job creation. The same thing was reiterated last year by Honorable HM, Home Minister, who is also the chairman of NEC, that one of the key emphasize and uh, uh, has to be the private investment. All the states, I come, I mean, I'm in touch with all the states and all of them without exception are now beginning to really emphasize on this and raising the voice. And Nagaland is also surely in this group and have already have seized the need of this. And of course, for which the state has uh, met this arrangement. And I'm very happy to say that of all the eight states, the, all the honorable CMs are taking the lead. <clears throat> Some few suggestions before I close, I uh, uh, would like to place before ma'am, that uh, for private investment to come, I think they have to be that what we call heavy touch guidance. I mean, they have to be a very strong push. Uh, without that, uh, I think we will continue to, uh, you know, continue to linger in this situation. And for CSR, maybe perhaps what we call light touch guidance also will do a lot of good. And for this um, CSR, for instance, what I feel is that we need, uh, you know, we well, the traditional towards education and some health and uh, some of the uh, very conventional uh, you know, initiatives are important and we need to continue. At the same time, the CSR can be much more flexible than some of the normal government schemes and programs. And therefore, they need to be flexible, innovative and
CO Go for younger. I'm giving the right answers for mathematical equation. Why is it not clear enough? So, can you repeat? Voices were clear enough. The connected for voices were clear enough. Sir, confirm me. The mic VPIP is using now. It's not switched on, right? VVIP is not switched on, right? It's not switched on, right? I will confirm. Guru. Wait, Divi, sir. Repeat, can you? My speech is on. Hmm. Is this? You record. Just record. Keep recording. It's okay. Hard to check. Thank you for the record. Hardly two hundred and eighty. One hundred and eighty. One hundred and eighty. ना Okay. <laughs> as well as expand its scopes. We are all privileged to have you with us, Madam. And I would like to express sincere gratitude on my own behalf and on behalf of people of Nagaland for your presence here today and all the supports extended. Not only one day, but three days altogether. That shows your commitment to the state. We are very grateful to the government of India for bringing greater focus on development of the northeastern region of the country. As a result, not only the government, but also the private sector is looking at the Northeast with a fresh perspective. The mandatory requirements of spending for corporate social responsibility by companies has opened up immense opportunities for companies to participate in grassroots development activities while not losing sight of their business commitments. However, Nagaland has not been on the radar of the corporates and the amount spent in Nagaland had remained very low. There is a scope and potential for companies to increase spending in the States tremendously. And as you have come, seen yourself, I'm sure your, your physical presence will also convince you that we're badly in need of you. This conclave would provide the platform for the CSR spending companies to harness various opportunities that Nagaland offers. It will not only help companies identify the right projects, but also right organizations to partner with uh, the implementation the projects. Our objective is, however, not limited to getting companies to spend larger amount of CSR in Nagaland. 
in seeking CSR investment. The state government is not trying to replace its own development act activities. It is seeking for the innovation and a plus in, into the cutting edge tools and resources with faster adaptations as per requirements of the state. That if partners may be effectively able to source, we are hopeful that the companies will also bring along the spirit of private enterprise, which will help the youth of the state to imbibe the culture of entrepreneurship. As part of this conclave, we are holding parallel track on CSR investments and startups and bankings. We are confident that the conclave will enhance our engagement with the private sector and banks, encouraging entrepreneurship between local entrepreneurships and the partner, the startup and establishment, established companies across the country, while also improving credit takeoff in the state. As many of you may be aware, Nagaland is a tribal state with a unique history and tradition. The constitution of India has special safeguards that protect the customs, practices, the traditions of the people of Nagaland. These unique customs and tradition and the rich social capitals are the core strength of Naga society. From this tradition have flowed the concept of village council and village development board. It has also helped us innovate the unique concept of communitization with the aim of building partnership of the government with community. Our strong social institutions, civil society organizations have helped us deal with prolonged insurgency and political turmoil. We are witnessing continuous peace since the ceasefire for the last 25 years. Government is investing in building infrastructure and improving public services, especially in education and health sector for our people. As a result, we're among one of the more literate states with good health indicator. There are, however, resource and capacity constraint and challenges of remoteness and geographical terrains that sometimes hinder our progress. These gaps are where we hope that companies with their resources, innovations and expertise can help the people of the state. We expect that the companies will use innovative solutions and resources to supplement the government efforts to meet the evolving challenges of public service delivery, especially in the health and education sector and in the remoter parts of the state. In this, we are lacking our state-owned resources because the financial pattern which agreed in 16-point agreement was withdrawn in the year 1989. And therefore, the uh, finance which was to be given for administrative expenses and developmental activities was withdrawn. On our agriculture and horticulture products, soil is fertile and so we produce a lot of agriculture products like ginger, turmeric, kidney beans, potato, pineapples, dragon fruits, persimmons, citrus, passion fruits, 
kiwi, coffee, and tea, which are organic and of high quality. We are part of the global hotspot for the bio, biological resources with bamboo and other forest products available in plenty. With the participations of industries in the right spirit using their CSR fundings or investments, we are hopeful that these can become part of the national and global value chain commanding premium prices, those increasing farmers' income. Employment and skill development of our talents youth is another important area of interest for industry partnership. Our vibrant pool of educated and talented youth is our most valuable resource. With employment in the government sector saturating and also changing inspirations, we would like them to have their own successful enterprises where they employ others and contribute fully to the growth of the nation. We have been successfully implementing a few CSRs project in a couple of districts in the state. I'm happy to note that preparations efforts for these events have resulted in tying up of so much. And thank you very much for the CSR projects which have been shown in the slide and also the commitment signed in the MOUs. On behalf of the state and the people, I want to thank all the corporates who had come and who had contributed the CSR and also signed MOUs to take the state development activities forward. A facilitation cell for CSR in Aiden, which will assist companies in following up on implementation of these projects to meet their regulatory requirements. I would also urge the companies to pick up projects from all region and district of the state in the interest of equitable development. In addition to CSR, we expect participation companies to explore the on tap investment potential of the state in forest, agriculture, handicrafts, education, medical, bamboo, hospitality, tourism, music, and arts sectors. In order to facilitate investors, we have already launched the single window system. We are also working to enable long leased land holding in the state. The state government uh, on the banking front, we are hopeful that the banking track of the conclave would result in more hustle free credit offtake from the banks. And they would also contribute their bid not only in our development endeavors, but also promote our budding entrepreneurs. As I conclude, I would like to uh, especially thank the efforts put in by the Department of Finance Services, the Department of Public Enterprises, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs of Government of India, and the Investment and Development Authority of Nagaland, as well as many state government officials across district and department in putting together this event. I would also like to express my thanks to all the companies, their officials who could attend this event in person or virtually. I also once again extend my highest gratitude to Sri Nirmala Sitaraman for gracing this event 
despite so many competing demands on her time. In the end, I wish this conclave a great success and we hope that it turns into a regular event to help us realize our development goals. Thank you, Jaheen, and God bless. It is here on this note, we would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the state and her people to acknowledge and also show our token of appreciation to our Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Sri Mati Nirmala Sitaraman, as our chief guest. Ma'am, it is here that we wish to give this token as a sign of saying thank you. May I request you to please stand and also request our Honorable Chief Minister to assist on her side. This is a small gift from us, ma'am. The presentation is being carried on a cane basket known as Mekko, and it is in Angami dialect, and it is used for carrying rice and vegetables. As we adorned you with a traditional wrap around called Sipati, which is worn by the Ao women on formal occasions and festivals. And to, along with that is a cognac traditional waistband called Shengit, made of colorful beads, symbolizing the nurturing quality of women, which is worn during important occasions such as this. And to go with that is a beaded necklace called Lak, in Kumangan dialect with layered multiplied strands bunched together to reflect a symbol of strength and exhibit the artistic hand and wealth of women. And along with that, we would like to add the Naga headband known as Akutsu Kuka in Sema dialect, which represents the crown of victory and the earring is a symbol of strength and essence of womanhood. And with that note, we would like to intricately present you with the Lotha shawl called Sukvasa, which is a symbol of grace, dignity, and creativity of women. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a gift from all of us to our Honorable Finance Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, for her presence here today. And it is here on this note, I would like to request our Honorable Chief Guest to do the honors to address the crowd. Ma'am. Good evening, Namaskar, and thank you very much for being here today. Honorable Chief Minister, Honorable Ministers, invited guests, my officials from Delhi, officials from Nagaland, and most importantly, all the industry captains, leaders, I would like to start with a slightly not so official view, if you'll pardon me. Nagaland doesn't get enough CSR. Nagaland is not drawing investors, was what the chief minister's observations were when he came to meet me in March and to speak about his concern. Today, I didn't disagree with him then, but I want to highlight today, just that one call of the chief minister to hold a CSR and an investor's conclave 
in Nagaland has drawn this entire business leadership to Nagaland. It is just one call, just that one call from the chief minister. It was an anxious voice then, and I don't want that anxious voice to be heard again. It was, sir, your one singular call for drawing the attention of industry to say that Nagaland should be your natural choice. And that is why you have naturally Nagaland. That's your, you know, very nicely coined. It does take a bit of effort. There is no doubt about it. And that little effort from the side of the chief minister is seeing this response today. It can even be better. I'm not denying that. But a response nevertheless. I therefore want to highlight the fact that calls for CSR will have to have some reality check as well. I heard the young entrepreneur who spoke, the lady who spoke well when the uh, program started. Can it not be made mandatory? For which we've given an answer in the parliament. She also went a bit further to say, if the government thinks Nothing can be beyond its powers to make it mandatory. But I'm sorry, you're right. But even without making it mandatory, you have seen the flow of investors who have come here to check it up, to offer money, offer services under the CSR. I'm not evading the question. I'm not evading the point that the young lady has made. But the point I want to highlight is CSR in many parts of the country is still being pushed on the basis of the board's decisions and as a result of which areas in which they see greater potential for social activity, funds are provided. But at the same time, there are also voices locally which say this company is present in my area, but they don't seem to spend adequately in my own area. And there are areas like Nagaland which don't receive adequately at all. So there are problems in our expectations about CSR. Let's keep that in mind. But I also heard the CIA designate chief Dinesh telling us CSR happens when investments happen. So really before us, there is a chicken and egg situation. Let investments happen, you'll get CSR. But CSRs don't happen and investments are not even coming in. So, thank you. So, states like Nagaland do face this conundrum. Investments are taking their time to come, but can CSRs not come? And not wait for investments to happen. They didn't wait for investments to happen. They have come here. They have come here from wherever they are, not just to show that they are interested and invested in the CSR aspects of Nagaland. And I'm sure this conclave will be the first stepping stone and there shall be many more who will come, many more who will take interest and many more who will find common cause to have greater CSR and also for possibly potential for uh, investments as well. But even in this list of CSR today, we have found greater interest in healthcare. 
healthcare seems to draw a lot of csr with their specific niche areas in which they want to spend their money which is good for the people of nagaland and i think that should be encouraged we should have more people coming in even if it is for strengthening the primary health care of nagaland i appreciate recognize and also indicate that that could be one of the ways in which nagaland's youth can be brought in as a part of csr activities i ref i'm here referring to the announcement announcement made by cii in setting up a training center for skilling with proper certification and why is that important the youth of nagaland are well educated and as the data which was mentioned by the chief secretary it is above the national average your literacy rate you are young about whom i can speak with a certain confidence because i had quite a few naga students who had come to jnu they were very well exposed good and confident and they could study in a national university like jnu with commendable performance youth of nagaland had that thing in them that they are well educated they carry themselves off very well they communicate well they have great strengths today india similarly marking the 75th year of independence we heard the prime minister also say from the red fort that logistics in india is going to be a big play where government will invest private sector investments will also come in there is a investment pipeline all of which are aiming to strengthen the infrastructure in the country existing as well as new brownfield and greenfield for which a lot of investment is coming also through the various investment funds which are coming into the country now in dealing with this in order to get greater synergy of projects which exist when i say projects railway station ports waterways sea ports airports manufacturing hubs all these exist in the country newer ones are also coming in now how are we going to have greater synergy between them are they standing in isolation is there a habitable community around it if there are more requirements for transit between a point to another from where this hub is located is there enough logistics is there enough mobility facility for mobility all this requires a lot of energy to young people to understand logistics be trained in it and take leadership position in this great effort of gati shakti so for that you need young energetic individuals who are going to be able to have the skills that is so required for giving leadership at various levels at a first layer level middle layer level and also the top layer level and i think therefore cii recognize recognizing that potential in the youth of nagaland and coming forward to set up such a training place with proper certification will only provide immense job opportunities for youth of nagaland anywhere in the country and let me add a bit more here without personalizing the matter the cii designate is also a man who's led the logistics industry very much in india and therefore you're hearing it from the horse's mouth as it were so that is a great opportunity which the cis come in at a time when business leaders are here signing mous with the government of nagaland and also for spending the csr funds 
there are a few thoughts which came in my mind based on the kind of little exposure that I've had from the afternoon. I've also had some very meaningful conversation with the Honorable Governor who was here today, who is here today, also speaking about the various things we can do in Nagaland. The millets that you grow, the fruits that you grow, the pineapple that you grow, the ginger, the turmeric. With my little experience as Commerce Minister of the country between 2014 and 17, I can tell you the product can be superlative. The products can be organic. However, you have a little problem in that, given the terrain of Northeast, aggregating such pro products, aggregating without loss of time from the farmland and finding a market is the biggest challenge. Today, the world wants organic products. You are sitting with a wealth of organic products. If that has to be aggregated, ideally aggregated by people belonging to this area so that you can benefit from it, aggregating and storing it, and without loss of time, be able to find a market elsewhere in India or outside. We did attempt something from the Commerce Ministry, and I'm sure it is workable even today. But even better is this one thought about which I did mention to the Honorable Chief Minister, even as I was sitting on the days. There are some states who have taken up this call given by the Honorable Prime Minister. One district, one product. For instance, states like Uttar Pradesh, which also did not have the advantage of a larger market for their produce. Sometime in 2019-20, started identifying products within a district. Not to say that product in another district will not be supported. But where the focus is, because I know pineapple, for instance, is super in a particular district of Nagaland, I'm sure it grows elsewhere as well. Now, if you identify a product for each district, government of India has come up with a good plan which gets executed even through the banks to provide common facilities for processing or for packing. And those common facilities can be available for all producers of the produce in that district. You also have the advantage of the banks together with the export authorities to bring in digital markets. Sitting where you are, you can identify the best price that you can get and ensure that the product is lifted from where it is to the market where it has to go. I would suggest, and I'm grateful that the Honorable Chief Minister received that thought and said he would certainly look into it. Identify for each one of the districts of Nagaland a product which need, need not necessarily be a perishable commodity. It can be a perishable agricultural product or it can be a long term, you know, a product which can stay for longer or it can be a handicraft product. It can be a weaver's product. It can be anything. The best in the district and once you identify, there are ways in which the union government together with the banks can come help in setting up the primary infrastructure that you would need, bring in the digitized uh, benefits of marketing it and be able to take it further. And in this too, CSR can be of some help. Besides this, I also highlight for the sake of the government here, and also for the youth of Nagaland, that branding is a big deal. Now, why do you have to have naturally Nagaland? Naturally, Nagaland is, of course, there in our minds. 
But once you start identifying it with a certain logo, with a certain color combination, with a certain kind of image projection and communication, finding the best way to communicate about your states, some specific unique products. There are global markets waiting to lap them up. I can tell you from my experience, coffee in India has always been from Karnataka, Kodagu, you know, a particular district where coffee has been traditionally grown. But when I was the representative from Andhra Pradesh in the Rajya Sabha, there is a hill district called Araku. It's a valley. It's called Araku Valley. The coffee grown there was the first time effort of coffee growers. They were tribals, they grew it in their open lands, being guided by the coffee board and others. But the effort they put to brand it, today Araku coffee, is a name to reckon with. In Paris High Street, you have Araku coffee stall. I have been to that place. Unbelievable the kind of reception it gets. It's one district in Shrikakulam, uh, next to Shrikakulam. It's a hilly district full of tribals who have attempted to take the risk to grow coffee, but today it has global market. And I'm sure therefore your millet, your coffee, which I've had the benefit of tasting because the Honorable Chief Minister had presented me once one little bottle of it, I think it's fantastic, but you should brand it. I just have a few more thoughts to share with you. Your Honorable Minister for Planning was telling me that majority of the teachers here come from South India. At the same time, I've also heard, not here, but in Delhi, that students in Nagaland do require science and technology education facilities. The STEM, science, technology, engineering, and medicine, has to have greater facility available here for students to study. So I would think that is one area in which in order to cultivate greater interest in science, Niti Aayog has a very good scheme, which I have taken to Karnataka as an MP from that state. The entire coastal Karnataka, western part of Karnataka, benefited by setting up in schools what is called an Atal Innovation Mission Projects, the AIM, Atal Innovation Mission Projects, where they set up fantastic science labs in school. And that gets graded upwards in colleges. And that further gets us graded upwards as innovation hub in the university, which is present in that state. I would appeal to the authorities here, be guided by your honorable chief minister, but Atal Innovation Missions, Atal tinkering labs should have come to your schools. You should have had Atal tinkering labs in most of your schools by now. At least now, make sure that Nagaland school does get the benefit of the tinkering labs at the school level and at the college level and even further afterwards. Some talk about to tourism. I, I would strongly think there is a big potential for domestic tourists to come to Nagaland for homestays, be a part of a Naga tribe's home. I'm sure a lot of youth in India who are very mobile and who would want to have some exotic experiences should be invited for a homestay in each of the tribe's house, we, each one can choose whoever they want to go and get exposure, appreciate the way they live. You live so naturally, you live in a sustainable fashion. 
you know to use natural resources frugally but make a beautiful colorful culturally rich life indian youth from every part of the country should share that experience i would think that is one of the things on which the tourism department in this state can do some innovative thinking and finally agriculture is a big thing here today drones are bringing in greater efficiency into agricultural practices you are able to better map the land better understand the terrain you are also able to better advise the farmers about land's nutrition about the way the crop can be cultivated drones have a great magnetic attraction of the youth i find several of the youth um, getting into drone manufacturing i invite the youth of nagaland to look at the world of drones and see if you can um, contribute to it and i'm sure there are several startups which can share their experience with you on that as well without taking more time i appreciate the chief minister of nagaland for ensuring csr reaches and not in small numbers big numbers to nagaland i appreciate your effort and i'm sure the youth of nagaland will give you great support it might even be worth your while to form a task group of naga youth who can themselves become the brand ambassadors move around the country on behalf of the government of nagaland take some of the officials with you convey the message of nagaland to all the industries seek startups to share their time with you and ensure that you are building the brand for nagaland i am sure it's a workable idea and the chief minister will give some time to think about it i personally thank each one of the companies industries who have come forward for this csr conclave my particular thanks to companies which have invested their csr in bringing in some kind of a socially conscious facility for nagaland i'm very grateful to each one of you because nagaland has to also catch up and develop for as fast as many of our states india's development cannot be without each and every one of the states developing equally or even better so thanks to each one of you who have come for the uh, physically come for attending and also ensured that you're giving your resources for the csr purposes but even otherwise i think this investor conclave will have to open up avenues for investment in nagaland so thank you very much for having me here i'm greatly impressed by the enthusiasm and energy of the naga youth i wish you all the very best and prosperity to the state this beautiful state of nagaland jai hind thank you honorable union minister shrimati nirmala sitaraman for your thoughts and also encouraging the state and her people it is here on this note i take this opportunity to take some announcements to our audience there will be a special session with honorable union minister for finance and corporate affairs and this is by invitation only so may i request for those who have received the invitation to please proceed later after the program and as you have the program with you i hope you may be guided by the volunteers and the respective officers in charge it is here i take this time for the concluding remarks and a vote of thanks and request shri niba krono the honorable minister planning and coordination land revenue and parliamentary affairs to do the honors honorable union minister for finance and corporate affairs sitara manji honorable chief minister 
and honorable ministers, advisors, and MLS. Representative from Government of India, led by Malhotra, and the Secretary in EC, Moses Chalai, and colleagues, friends, and our dear President of the CII, Dennis, Chief Secretary, Nagaland, Ja Alam, senior bureaucrats, officials, dear corporate representative, the industry captains, the banking representative, entrepreneurs, Friends, ladies and gentlemen, today, we are so grateful to our Union Finance Minister for coming here, showing her concern about the state of Nagaland. Ma'am, during the swearing ceremony, also you have come as a defense minister. That means from the beginning you are with us. And a person like you, we have a vast experience. You have come in a short way. You have told us so many things. You are students of uh, GNU. And when anyone says that a person is from GNU, then we come become closer. <laughs> then also your experience in the European countries that we have come to know about that. And you are highly intellectual and for which we're grateful to you. And not only that, not that a strong mother, but you are one of the most powerful women as Forbes magazine have given you the title, the 34th strongest woman in the world. So that personality is here with us. We're so grateful to you, ma'am. Ma'am, you have uh, opened our eyes. A state like Nagaland, CSR is something new to us. There are so many, they don't know what is a CSR. And there are few NGOs working here and there, but they find it very difficult because our state was not so familiar with CSR funds. And Madam, our state, because of our political issue, we could not participate even two five-year plans during the 50s and 60s. So these are some of the problems that we have so that we could not catch up with the rest of the world. But now, peace is there. And we're grateful to Honorable Chief Minister for inviting you and when you have come, we are so grateful that all these corporate representatives, everyone has come, so many, when it was introduced to us just now. We are so great, 
grateful to you, madam. You have bridged the gap between the CSR representative, the industrial captain, the industry captains, the, and every one of us. And we hope that from today onwards, we will also move into a new world. Ma'am, we are so grateful to you for giving your advice about the agriculture and tourism. We are also trying our best to improve our agriculture system because here